Mr. Roger, thanks for dropping by. Um, Sunday Orchid chat today is going to be about, it was effectively a question left in the comments to go in the um, viewers Orchid questions and answers. Um, but quite honestly it's too big. It's a subject rather, rather than a da 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 yes. <laughs> That's a question, you know, simple. Um, and it's basically back to the old winter resting dendrobiums. Um, now, going into their winter rest, certainly with me, my, my grow room is influenced by weather. If we get a late autumn with some nice sunny spells, yeah, then my plants are not going to go into their rest at the same time as perhaps they did the year before. So it's not a calendar thing. With me, it's a weather thing. And it really can, you can get some quite late autumns. And this year we did. We had a late autumn. We didn't get any cold weather. So my night temperatures were not dropping right down until well into December. So I had a late start to my winter rest because it is weather dependent. Um, I mean, some years we start getting frost in October. Now that slows them up a bit. <laughs> start getting the heater out. So, um... First of all, we have what I call the true winter resters. Some of those are blatantly obvious. They're annually deciduous. They dump their leaves in the winter. They've got rest me in winter written all over them. They're not a problem. They're quite easy. But there are others that don't dump their leaves, and yet they still need that rest. So it's down at plant level now. Right? Yeah? You can't go to the dendrobium sections to any great extent and say right this section needs rest because it doesn't work like that there are crossovers so you can't use that it's down at plant level quite honestly and um, there are also those that are classed as drier in winter and then there are those that in proper circumstances would not rest in winter as such they're subject to a wet season and a drier season. They don't get major temperature changes. And they come from evergreen forests, so they don't get leaf fall. So that they, that they would effectively just keep growing. Now I've got some of those, but they can't do that here because I'm giving them the equivalent of a winter by dropping my winter temperatures down. So they can't do what they want to do. So what do they do? They stop growing in winter. So they go into the same category as drier in winter for me. These are the likes of the, um, the Phalaenopsis type dendrobiums, the Latoria types, the black hair types. Under normal circumstances, they wouldn't chill down in the winter. It would be a bit cooler, but not a lot, and drier, but not dry. Yeah? And they quite happily tick over, but for me, my temperature gets down lower than they like. So they just... <laughs> reward me by stop stopping growing and as such they really do need to dry off right. so that excludes those straight away now I'm hoping to dig in here without having to clear the whole shelf off let's start with some pots uh -huh. Now, I didn't prepare by getting all these out because I wouldn't have had anywhere to put them all anyway and I want to do it a bit at a time. Right, that is blatantly obviously a nobly type. Um, it's got a good few clusters of buds on it but compared with how this plant used to be this is nothing. This is a poor show this year as expected. Yeah? This plant got messed about last year, got split and then it had another piece yanked off of it. <coughs> Um, so it, it's been decimated basically. So round the back here, we've got all the oldest canes. Have they got any buds? No, because they've bloomed their heads off over the last few years and they've run out of nodes. All the leaf nodes have had blooms. They won't ever get them again. So these canes serve no real purpose now apart from storage. There's not many leaves left on them. Um, those won't stay on there too much longer. So then we come round to this side and we see the um, rather feeble effort of growing some new canes. Now these two here are last year's canes and they have no buds on them at all. And then we've got a couple, one buried in there and another one here 
that are actually like the tail end of the year before. And they've got some buds and some stumps where they've bloomed before. So that's the state of play with that one. That's my um, nobly type prima donna, uh, nice yellow hybrid. So we will get some blooms, but it's not going to be a showstopper like it has been. That actually got best hybrid in show a few years ago. It certainly wouldn't do it now. to be escorted out the door. <laughs> well, you, out, scrubby plant. But that's how it's gone. It will recover. By the end of this growing season, I expect it to be looking quite good. <laughs> Fingers crossed and all that stuff. Now this is another nobly type. Um, and I got this in the middle of the year, in bloom. So these two canes here, round the back, or round facing the camera now, were in bloom when I got it. And you can see all the stumps where the, the buds were. Um, it did have three new growths on it, one of which was damaged and got cut off, unfortunately. But the other two new growths grew on nicely. And they've not only grown on nicely, complete with mealy bugs, oh, they are getting about again. Um, they grew taller than the previous canes. They're not as fat, but they're, they're taller. So I've got two new growths that are longer than previous canes. There's not a sign of any buds on those, but they grew into winter. So they didn't really respond to the winter until practically Christmas time. And although they've got their terminal leaf, they've stopped growing, they were very late reaching that point. So I suspect if these two canes are going to bloom, they're going to bloom right out into spring. And they're not going to bloom for, for a, a couple of months yet. As I said, there's no sign of any buds yet. They may not even bloom, but I suspect they will. They'll just be late. That's, that's the two uh, potted noblies. And then I'm going to get the monster out simply because... This is actually a rester, and it's not a true rester, it's a semi-rester, so it's drier in winter. It's a bit of a monster. Yeah. And this is Dendrobium chrysotoxin. And um, this blooms over several years on the same canes. So we've got new growths on this, we've got these two here and these two smaller ones round here. And if I can get it to a place where you can see it, the first sign of buds. Hang on, so I'm having to look through the plant now. It's like looking through the flipping jungle. I've got to find where that bud was now. There it is. There on the end of my finger. Out of this whole plant, that's the obvious one that's starting to move. And that's on a new growth, last year, last season's growth. But if we look round, we'll start finding some more, I suspect. Yep, there's another one there. So that one's just starting to move. And that's on an older cane that has bloomed before. Yeah? So, well, there's another one round here. Now, this is quite an old cane. That's got several um, flower spikes on it. But that one's just starting to move as well. Yeah? So this one is just starting to push its buds. Um, and the trouble is, I can't for the life of me remember how long it... Actually, do I know? I'm not sure I do know. This was in bloom when I got it. Um, we all know Lynn, who, who's recently started doing some videos, uh, chairman of Wessex. I got this from her. She brought it to the Bournemouth Orchid Society in bloom as part of a I'm getting rid of all my giant plants exercise. And um, nobody bid on it. She had a reserve on it. So I said, um, what do you want for that? And she told me and I said, well, I'll have it then. I, I just <laughs> felt a little bit sorry for her having humped the flipping thing in from where she lives to there. And nobody even bid on it. And I'll tell you, 20 quid? effectively heading up to a specimen sized plant. Well, that's what it's like at some of the orchid societies. They won't part with their blinking money. <laughs> <laughs>
Anyway, we have buds coming on that just. It's just starting. Let's get the monster back where it goes. That's good. Now, last time I got that out to water it, those shoots were not there. So they've come along in the last uh, 10 days or so. It was the last time I dug that out. That's right. once the pot's done. You have to excuse the rain, that's the back end of Storm Dennis. Seems like our weather at the moment is queuing them up a week at a time. Last weekend we had Storm Chiara, this week we've got Storm Dennis. If we're going to have one next weekend it will start with E. We're going to tweak the pattern, A, B, C for Chiara, D for Dennis. So it'll be E, it'll be Storm Edward or something like that. Or Erica, or something beginning with E, anyway. And no reason why we shouldn't get one, the way the jet stream's stuck at the moment. It just, keep, just keeps chucking them across. Right, now, wrestlers. This is a dryer in winter. Because it's never bloomed for me before, this year it's getting a very dryer in winter treatment to see if I can get the previous year's growths to, bro to bloom. This is last year's growths up here, uh, most of which have now finished growing. But again, that carried on growing into winter, which it isn't supposed to do. This was the dwarfed previous year's canes, dwarfed because it had no flipping roots on it at that time. And these canes were over a metre long when I got it, and um, I, I cut them back for convenience. Now that doesn't mean to say that we, could, we might get some buds on here, we might get some buds here, but that's never bloomed so far. Maybe it will. Right, some cheating resters. We've got this one, I'm showing this one, even though, strictly speaking, it doesn't even belong to me anymore. This is my um, Lodigesii. And this is now a classic example. It's coming back into growth, just. We've got another one down here. So we've got a couple of, oh, and another one there. So we've got a couple of growths just starting. The fact that those growths are starting now, I don't think this is going to bloom this time round. This got, um, it didn't take kindly to having its kikis taken off. And I think what happened with it, only guesswork, but from past years of how it's performed, and then last year it just didn't, and on into this year. It produced a lot of kikis last year after it bloomed, and I let them get quite large because I wanted to take them off and start a new mount with lots of kikis on. So I let them get quite big, and I think they took all of the energy out of the plant, and I then took them off, and the plant just stalled. All its growth had gone. Effectively, it was like removing all of its growth. So it's stalled, but it's coming back into growth now, so it should push on again this year and hopefully pick up a bit. So, but that's a true winter rester, annually deciduous. It dumps its leaves in the winter, you might get a few hanging hang in there till spring, but most of the time it dumps the lot. And as a consequence, looks a right mess in the winter. But um, let's just get the... Uh, Although those have grown on a little bit during the last growing season, that's the amount of growth I took off that plant. Those are the kikis that came off that plant. That's a lot. That was all of its growth, effectively. There wasn't much left after these came off. Um, and you can see the size of some of these. This big. This big. And believe it or not, I've only just noticed. See if I can get it in a place where you can see. These kikis are coming into growth now. Now I didn't stop feeding and watering these through the winter, that's why they've kept their leaves and they're coming into growth now. So uh, as far as these pair are concerned, their winter rest is over. New growths are starting. That's the point at which you've got to get back into it. Now what I usually do is, as, as they come into growth like that, they go back into the watering schedule 
but every other one for, for about two or three weeks because don't forget in the summer I'm watering virtually daily unless we get a dull spell um, but in the winter it's more like every three days so next time I water my mounts which should be today but it will be tomorrow um, they'll be brought back into the run the only difference will be is they will only get water for their first good soaking for the year they'll just get water and that will help to start re rehydrating them and getting them mobile inside again getting things starting to move they've got some liquid to push up through the plant get things moving again then the next time they'll get a low level feed then they'll probably get another flush then they'll get another low level feed and eventually time will tick on and it'll get to the point where I'm feeding normally again but those two are coming out of their rest I was asked really how do you know when the winter rest is over it's a plant level I'm afraid oh, now this is a winter rester fully deciduous as it has done but it's new to me I got this at Malvern now this is an anosmum but it's it's the variety Laos that has the yellow in it there's no sign of any buds so I'm not sure it's going to bloom and at the moment there is no sign of life at the base that plant is in effect dormant it's doing nothing it has no leaves to support how much water does that one need at the moment the answer is none the only reason that would get a trickle of water is that these were starting to desiccate and they're not they're still nice and plump so that one is resting it's obviously resting there's no you know no guesswork or anything now if I if these were starting to desiccate I would give it a trickle of water now, if I get any coffee out of the way it doesn't matter if it goes on the floor I'll show you what I mean I'm typical I haven't got any water around <coughs> I've just got a little bit in the bowl here which I'll tip into the glass <coughs> excuse me because a lot of people say what is a trickle of water a trickle of water you have a look at the moss mass, yeah, that's, that's crusty dry at the moment. A trickle of water is that. That's it. Most of that moss is still dry. I just put a little bit round the edge, which slowly but surely will soak into the rest and it will be just moist. This is still dry all through here this is wet round here and there are some bare roots here that got a little bit but that's a trickle yeah that's just to keep it going that, that didn't need that by the way that was for demonstration purposes it won't hurt it right my two oddities because these are odd this is a winter rester that doesn't drop its leaves in fact that can go without water for long periods and show no signs of even being rested. It doesn't change. All that happens is that um, this was the latest growth at the end of the season. Yeah, This is what the growths look like. They retract and get ridged. So that's their appearance. Yeah, So these shouldn't change and at worst that should end up looking like these. If they start desiccating any more than that, then it needs a trickle of water. And again, on here, what would a trickle of water be? It'd be a bit, a bit down there, a bit round here on these bare roots. Yeah, perhaps a bit up there. That's it. I wouldn't pour it over the whole thing like I do in the summer. Um, just a trickle. And at the moment, there's no sign of life on that and no sign of spikes. Resting. And it still is. That's a new one that hasn't bloomed for me before. And then it's some smaller cousin, well, smaller in cane and leaf size, not in plant size. That was the um, aggregatum or Lindleyi, I must start calling it Lindleyi, as it should be. And this is Jenkinsii. This is like a mini version, it does have slightly different growth habits. Now, this one. 
I'm looking at this one a little more carefully because this one should be starting some spikes very soon and when they are just starting they are a right pain to see last year when it first came into spike I had about a dozen spikes starting on this plant and I held it up to the camera and I even pointed at them and people didn't believe me they were making me out that I was telling porky pies well we can't see any spikes there's none there you're making it up and then of course gradually they get longer and longer and then they became a little more visible but at the moment nothing so again this one is not desiccating it doesn't need any water and it's in deep rest it's not showing any signs of coming out of its rest yet it's dormant to all intents and purposes I don't like using the word dormant because it it's a term that is used for other types of orchids that really are dormant effectively dead as a door now <laughs> and you don't get water anywhere near them under any circumstances Somebody, some people even put them in the fridge to keep them cold. Right, come on, come on, come on, come on. I'm going to get these back now because I need some space. But you see what I'm getting at? It's um, the resting dendrobiums are not all the same. You can't go by appearance. Far from it. Um, as you saw with the, you know, with these, they keep their leaves for years, years and years. Big, thick, leathery, strappy leaves completely not growing. It's, just, it's in the middle of its rest and no sign of keeling over or dumping leaves or anything. That's, that's just how it is. And it'll stay like that possibly for another two or three weeks before anything happens. And then it will come back into life. Right. I must remember to water these tomorrow as well. The uh, a lot of Jesse eyes. As a pair, they need water now. And that one didn't need any, but it got some. Won't do it any harm. It's only a small amount. So it's not going to suddenly spring into life because it had water when it shouldn't have done. Although it might do. <laughs> shouldn't do. Right. Uh, uh, this is a, a nuisance because in many places it will say that this is a dry in winter. This is the Sinilli, Mr. Hairy. Um, but I don't believe it is. I believe it's one that does have a drier, brighter winter, but not to any dramatic extent. And it doesn't chill right down in its natural environment. It's a bit cooler, brighter to a degree, it doesn't only come from deciduous forests, it comes from semi-deciduous forests as well. So it could decide to grow on a tree that doesn't dump its leaves. So it's not necessarily a high winter light type. And um, this one is stopped growing. Yeah, So it's having a bit of a rest now, as the cooler temperatures have done that. But what it is going to do soon is bloom its head off. There's a lot of spikes on here. Just this area here but we've got quite a few spikes. This is going to be probably the best I've ever had. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven spikes on that, on, on, just on those two canes, so the blooms are going to be very cl clustered together on this part of the plant. Not a sign of any spikes over here, but then this was three or four plants when it got mounted and um, this was the bigger piece. The other smaller pieces are the rest of what you see. They're probably not going to bloom until next year after they've had another season of growth. But um, yeah, I don't... that one doesn't stay dry in winter for me. What I do with it is um, about every third run, which would be every eight, nine, ten days, I give it a little bit. Yeah. And now that those spikes are starting to progress, last time I watered that, it also had a bit of feed, just to help those spikes push on. Uh, right, you can go back up there. Right, now we're on to the big stuff. So I need to get some big stuff out of the way. I need somewhere to put these things. Right, uh, now we're on to the what I call the long cane dendrobiums, although they're not all huge. 
Now this is Dendrobium aphyllum. This is an annually deciduous plant and it's already done its thing with the autumn and um, at the moment we have buds pushing out on two canes this cane and this cane and the buds are now progressing away these are no longer nubbins these are now buds there is a difference let's see if I can find one that's still a nubbin It'll show up better on one of, the ne one of the next ones. But these are now buds. This is a debate. And I've got two plants that come into the same category here, both about the same size, probably both at the same stage. Now all the books and some growers that I know say take no notice of those buds. Don't start watering and feeding until the growths start. Now at the moment there is no sign of life at the base of that plant. If these buds are going to progress and bloom and I don't water and feed, the only place they can take their energy from is what's already in the plant. And My opinion is they will totally drain it as a consequence. But it could be that draining process that triggers the new growths. Whereas in previous years, at this point, what I call bud break. It's changed from a nub into buds. I've started to reintroduce, reintroduce watering and feed. And my new growths have started very late on the plant. So they don't get a full growing season. So that's one. That was the aphyllum. Now unfortunately, <laughs> one of these plants is no longer mine. So I'm not sure I'm going to be able to do the experiment. It depends at what point I post these off. So this is Primulinum. And it's actually got another name as well. This is still doing autumn. It still hasn't even dropped all its leaves yet. And um, it has a consequence. This one's late. Very late. The nubbins are just starting to show under the sheaths. They're almost invisible. So the experiment I wanted to do, I can't do. I wanted two plants very similar that were at a similar stage of development and I thought they were, but they're not. So this one's lagging behind quite badly, honestly. Come on, fuck your ideas up. But obviously it went into its rest late because it still hasn't finished dropping its leaves. There's still even a bit of green on some of these leaves. So this one went in late and I think as a consequence it will come out late. So not much sign of life on that. That certainly won't get any water or feed for some time yet. And that's those two. They are very similar, their blooms are similar, growth habits are similar. So they can, in my book, they just get treated the same. Right, a couple more. Oh, let me just get the, uh, the other nobly down, because if I don't do it now while I see it, I'll forget. We do have another nobly that I decided to mount. This has not bloomed for me, uh, but it is going to bloom. Uh, we've got buds, buds showing on this cane. Uh, I'm sure there was. Oh, and there's some, uh, there's some buds on this cane here. Yeah, so they're just pushing on, and some buds on this cane. Um, most of these canes were on it when I got it, but what's more important, or as important, is if you look down at the base get me finger on the end of one. New growths have already started on this one. So this one comes back into the watering and feeding program, slowly but surely. It's now starting to grow. That doesn't matter what the buds are doing on this one. Yeah, The fact that the buds are still nubbins, they're not really showing buds yet, they're just pushing away from the cane slightly but there's no real buds showing yet. Yeah, they're just just starting to extend. So I wouldn't have started to water or feed this one until I can see some buds, actually see them. But if it's growing from the base, I can see one, two, two new growth started. So that one comes back into the watering program now. 
I'm going to have to do some shuffling as a consequence, because that one nibs so far away I've got a job to reach it, because I don't ever need to. <laughs> it just lives up the end there on its own. Right, biggies, last two. I'm going to get these round the right way now, they're tagless. One of them is a Nosman, one of them is Nesta. <laughs> Can't remember which way round it is. Um, but, let's get to the base. I'll put my finger there. You've got to watch what's going on in winter time. That is a patch of probably scale. Or mealy bugs, but it's a cluster. You can't see the individual creatures. It's just like a white furry mass. It shouldn't be there. So uh, we'll deal with that. And first of all, we'll have a good look to see the extent of it. It's just that one little area. Well, for now, um, I don't even know if this works, but um, I've always got some ready at hand. And um, even if it doesn't work, I'm sure it doesn't do much good. That's hydrogen peroxide, 3%. And if you were a tiny little creature, and you got your whole body absolutely soaked in something that has a burning effect, I don't think it would do you much good. But whether it actually kills them or not, I'm not sure. Uh, but it's something I've got to hand that will do for now. Right. Fully deciduous, except this time. I had a problem with this. This went into winter. You can see the buds starting to push away from the cane. They're starting to become quite distinct now. But they're not leaving the cane yet. They're still hugging. So I still call those nubbins. Until they move away and start to form little buds on the end of the uh, spikes, I don't call them buds yet. But this one went into winter. It stopped growing and then blow me, it started again. So this cane is actually growing. It's doing something very, very strange. And this plant didn't grow properly last year. It pushed out one new growth, whereas previous years it's done two or three. So this one's not a happy bunny. I'm pretty sure this is the nester, actually. And obviously something went wrong with it, because these sheaths should be a nice pale colour, like this. They shouldn't be covered in rusty type spots. There's something went a little wrong with this plant. And also, there are some roots that started to grow and then stopped again. I've got a feeling I might have some little chewing munchy people living in there. I took some of the roots out. And because the roots didn't grow on, it only produced one growth. But, literally, within a week or so, that will come back into watering and feeding because I can see the buds. Once they start to move like that, they'll grow at a reasonable pace. So we will get blooms, but we won't get many. And then the other one, the last one, if I can get to it. Oh. Oh. Another annually deciduous one that decided not to do autumn this year. Right, the other one, the one we've just looked at was a Nosman. This one is Nesta. <laughs> I knew one of them had a tag on, <laughs> and it's this one. Right, so this is Nesta. Now, this has gone into autumn and winter and decided not to drop its leaves. It's still got bright green leaves on it. It's got a gappy bit here, but as far as the buds are concerned, the nubbins, they are in exactly the same state as the previous plant. So they are both at the same stage. Or are they? New growth. So this one is coming back into growth. The other one wasn't. But their buds, nubbins, are exactly the same stage. And this one was late going into its winter rest, but it doesn't seem to have affected its time of blooming. Yeah? Okay? So, this is the time of year for me 
that I need to watch out because things are changing. You have to bear in mind, I think we're about at 10 hours of daylight now. Well, in the depths of winter, it was only eight. We've already gained two hours daylight. And between now, whatever the date is now, 16th, and the end of the month, bearing in mind it's a short month, February, we'll be up to virtually 11 hours. So in the next 10 or 11, 12 days, we're going to gain another hour of daylight. And we'll be back up to the magic 11 hour days, which is what these should be getting all through the winter. Yeah? So, yeah, that one's coming back into growth. Goody! That means it's going to get a full growing season to push that cane on. And don't you dare be the only one. You need to be one of several. I won't say how many, but several being more than one. You're listening. None of this one cane a year, malarkey. We need you to grow. You only get blooms on those type <coughs> on your previous year's growths. So if you only get one, well, that's the maximum blooms you're going to get. If you don't do the winter rest somewhere near the requirement, you won't get as many blooms. If you don't rest them at all and keep them warm, you might not get any blooms at all. They do like to chill down a bit and brighten up a bit and go dry. Right, I hope that's helped. It's a subject that people get... It's another one of these that is easy to get bogged down. <laughs> oh, I've got some of those winter rester types. I'm going to kill them. No, you won't. <laughs> They'll be fine. They might not bloom as well as they could do if you don't get it somewhere near right. And they vary. Um, the primulinum and the aphyllum that we looked at, they don't need to get that cold. But what they need is a change from their summer, summer growing environment and temperatures, day and night. They need to step back to cooler day and night by an amount. It doesn't mean to say they've got to chill down to five degrees or something daft. And even though some of the places they grow they might, they don't need it. They need the change from their summer growing environment to their winter. And they need a transition through autumn that helps them get that difference. And it's more about that difference than the, than the physical temperature. So they don't want to get bogged down. And for goodness sake, don't use the calendar. Use your eyes. Look at your plants, let them talk to you. <laughs> Hopefully you'll never hear what they say. <laughs> Men in white coats will be after you. But you know what I mean, they, they, they say things. They say, you know, my leaves are starting to yellow now. It's because I need to rest. So you need to help me and slow the feed right down to nothing and reduce that watering down so that I'm going into my rest. But the plant, you don't trigger that, the plant does. Now, OK, you could try it if you like. Get to the end of August, beginning of September, and stop watering and feeding you. And see what they do. Do you think they'll go into a winter rest? I think they're more likely to die. Or lose the progress on any growths that were still progressing because they hadn't finished their season's growth. So there we go. Um, this is the time to look out for changes. Now, some of the winter resters, the first thing that will happen will be spikes, buds and spikes, yeah? You've now got to choose, and I can't... All I can say is what I've done in the past, and as those buds push away from the canes, I've always started to help them, thinking that if I don't introduce a little bit more water with some low-level feed in there, those buds are going to turn into blooms and a lot of them, they're going to drain the plant. Because where else can they get nutrients to grow like that? They're going to drain them out of the plant, aren't they? Now, maybe they've adapted to make allowances for that, and they've stored enough up during the previous season to allow for all those blooms to be produced without any help. But I like to help them. But I was hoping to hold one back this year. But as I said, with, with the plants to go, I haven't now got the pair that I wanted. So there we go. Winter resters. Don't get bogged down. And don't certainly don't get bogged down with the nobly hybrids. They need a bit of a rest. Not much. They're not going to dump all their leaves. They're going to keep most of them. 
<laughs> for a start. So there's no sign, you know, they're not going to say, I'm now going to rest for winter and as a consequence I'm going to dump all my leaves. They'll turn yellow and go drop on the floor. It does, they don't do that. They'll drop some now and again. But don't go mad trying to rest nobly hybrids. If you've got nobly the species, you will need to rest it or you'll have a poor blooming and in some cases no blooms. That does need the proper thing. The species. Most people have only got hybrids and there are so many to choose from. But if you've got a species that's a winter rester, you're going to have to do it to some extent. The nearer you get to it, the better the blooming and in theory the better it will burst back into life as the days get longer and the temperatures come back. It will burst into life, you know, almost ecstatically coming back into growth from a semi-dormant period. So there we go. Don't get bogged down with the winter resters. And um, if you worry about them and you think you're that type of person that does worry a lot about getting things right and this, that and the other, maybe they're not the best things for you. They're not ideal plants to be growing in the home. They can be done, but in some cases you're going, to have, you're going to struggle with the light levels in winter unless you've got artificial lighting. And because um, they need, you know, the, the, the deciduous types, they are deciduous for a reason. They come from areas of forest where the leaves drop. But they do get bright light and cooler temperatures. That's why the leaves drop on the trees. So they're not so easy to look after in the home, but some of the drier in winter types probably can do okay in the home on the grounds that, you know, they, all you need is a bit brighter and a bit cooler. You don't need it quite so dramatic, but um, it's at plant level, like I said. Unfortunately, if you've got a dendrobium that comes under that, um, dry winter rest or much drier and cooler in winter, it's at plant level to know the level of resting you need to apply. From a full winter rest to a partial rest to just easing off through the winter because your temperatures aren't going to drop so much. And then there's the other set, like I said, that in my grow room, they're only drier in winter because my temperatures drop. If I, if I heated this place to 15, 16 degrees, minimum nighttime temperatures, I'd have a lot of dendrobiums that would carry on growing and not stop. But then my winter resters probably wouldn't do very well at all. <laughs> They'd wonder what was going on. <laughs> they missed out on their skiing holiday and carried on with the beach holiday. Right, see you next time. Thanks for dropping by.